All right, you on? Hello, hi, and welcome. This is Brad Mullen here at ModernHealthCoach.com, and we're here at the uh, Atlanta store today in uh, Sedona, Arizona, in uh, somewhere beginning of January 2015, and we're going to go over the Ascension Foundation and Personal Alchemy course that I put together here uh, going forward this year. It's a summation of all my uh, research and interest in life and uh, to give me the next level because the status quo wasn't cutting it for me and a lot of people today um, with the current state of affairs. Um, so next slide please. So the current state of affairs has it that you know we're the current state of human existence has it that uh, we all have needs and uh, we all need them provided for. And at the bottom of this uh, slide, you'll see biological and physiological needs, uh, which are basic life needs, your air, food, drink, shelter, warmth, et cetera, obviously, and your safety to be protected, security, and up again, beginningness and love needs here, uh, your family, uh, affection, relationships, work, group, cohesiveness, uh, community even. Uh, and then your esteem needs, which is uh, achievement, status, responsibility, reputation, kind of making something of yourself and your name, uh, and cognitive needs, their knowledge, meaning, and self-awareness, something putting in a turn the key in the lock and unlocking your mind and getting some steam here. Uh, aesthetic needs, beauty, balance, form, uh, self-actualization, personal growth, self-fulfillment, and up the top is transcendence, helping others to self-actualize. So you want to get out everybody back home at the big dance at the end of the show. Uh, so the plot ends nice, right? So you got to build these needs up. Uh, and we got to start at the bottom and have all these needs met. But today's world, uh, things are harder than they seem. And uh, our current state of affairs, again, I put this together. Our religions, healthcare, government, corporations, banks, world leaders, and celebrities have mostly let us down and do not have our best interests in mind. Our best counter move is become fully aware, self correct, self empower with radical self reliance by building communities based on the law of one and renewable resources in the new age here. Um, the evolution happens in spurts when a dramatic life slash earth shift requires a permanent change. It's adapt or die. Uh, and current trends will not continue long. The only constant is change and you got to keep up with the times or step aside. Um, don't be afraid of change. We find ourselves down here in the crisis with all of our systems in, in play kind of uh, poking out of the seams and crumbling before our eyes. The writing's all over the wall. So we need to give shape to a new paradigm and the powers that be kind of want to hold on to the old shape that is that it works for them because they're at the top of the pyramid everything funnels to them but it's not working for the majority and like Abe Lincoln said you can't fool all people all the time. So uh, there's about time to shift and uh, what I've done in, in, is for me, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, uh, born in 73, left-handed Gemini, had two Christmases, two New Year's, had two religions, uh, Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholic. Um, Science-based, uh, you know, uh, had this, was a good kid, uh, and then I had knee surgery, hip surgery, chiropractic car crash, had some sports injuries, and everything started to unwind. How I was forced with a crisis, and uh, I was um, lemons or lemonade when the doctors telling you you're not going to walk, you need to have hip replacement, and, and it's fear tactics. And so I had knee surgery, hip surgery, you know, chiropractic car crash. In 07, that changed my life and again, turned it around. And I had an environmental degree, uh, did 13 years of environmental remediation experience, cleaned up ground zero, military bases, gas stations, dry cleaners all over the country. And so I've had my own physical and chemical traumas that I've had to overcome. I turned my science degree loose on health and solved my own problems, which is, what, which is what I'm trying to get you guys to get in the position to be able to do is to disseminate all the BS and focus in on realities that can transcend your current reality and make your day a whole lot better. So the modern health coach here is services, products, and information. I have a newsletter. And this is my fiance and I, be rad and joy, a superfood formula, real good greens, proteins, and uh, teas. And up here is your services. I'm uh, MHC Consulting, and for my uh, environmental and uh, kinesiology degree and health all in one. And come see me on all the services here. This is kinesiology and energy work, uh, electromedicine, civilian retreats. You come out here and do some work and uh, take care of business. The electromedicine I specialize is the Ed Skilling proprietary instrument. Does really well. Electromedicine, energy holograms, energy jewelry, 
um, the Lemurian healing tools, which is a slim spurling technology. And then you get into the detox and the oxygenation and protein and greens and minerals and vitamins and enzymes and superfoods, herbs, teas, tonics and tinctures. Um, I can't remember. Essential oils and beauty. Um, dental, mental, water filtration, atmosphere, or you can pull it right out of the air like a glorified dehumidifier, green cleaners, garden pets, and I have some combo kits. So this is what I've put together in 22,000 hours plus and counting of research, uh, going to expos, going to live conscious events, walking, talking, breathing, solving my own problems, and uh, this is my contribution to society. So, uh, next slide, please. <coughs> How it all came to be. Uh, is when I grew when I was growing up, I remember laying in bed thinking, why do I think this thought to that thought to that thought? Why do I think associate different thoughts? And I came back to be as know thyself. Uh, and that's the Oracle of Delphi there in Greece above Athens, beautiful place, and that's written in the stone in there. Know thyself. That's the first thing when you come out is really know what makes you tick, how you operate, and if you understand that, basically you can apply the golden rule rule two here, and so you don't harm anybody else. If you know what makes you tick, then you're not going to want to do any harm to anyone else. So these two rules, I think, cover it all. You can throw out the Ten Commandments and just stick to these two. I think you'll do much better. Um, and so you really get deep. And also love yourself. Don't forget, whatever shortcomings we may have, it's all human. So know yourself, be a term, a, a cool term with it, love yourself, and then apply the golden rule, and you'll start building karma cash. You'll start earning points for yourself in the future by doing these two things. And you'll get ahead. And you, once you know yourself, it's a beautiful thing because then you can operate within the constructs of a new world model. And Plato said, uh, as above, so below. And that applies throughout. That's a, a theme in this presentation in life. And you're looking uh, on the left side at the micro and on the right side at the macro, uh, the brain cell, the universe, uh, the birth of the cell, death of the star, an eye and a nebula here in the bottom right. And these are the parallels of reality uh, and the basic uh, keystone undercurrents that Plato had thought when he said as above, so below. So that little divine spark in the Michelangelo painting, that's kind of as above, so below. We have that you know, divine spark from above, if you will. Next slide, please. And this is uh, laid out in the infinite uh, to the spirit. So our spirit is connected to the infinite. Our soul is connected to the celestial stars and the zodiac, right? Uh, our mind is connected to the intermediate or the ethers, can kind of between the lines. And our body, obviously, to the terrestrial, to the earth. And down here you have levels of selfhood, the person, and levels of reality with a thinner uh, ethereal to the 5D to the top. Uh, so this is as above, so below with the levels, and we're right spanning the gap here in the middle. So it's very interesting times we find ourselves in. Same universal energy principles apply again to the macro and the micro. Just a little poem here. As is the human body, so is the cosmic body. As is the human mind, so is the cosmic mind. As is the microcosm, so is the macro. As is the atom, so is the universe. And they are all uh, similar in nature. Back one. There you go. And uh, so we are all spiritual beings, uh, beings having a human experience, and you are the universe expressing itself for a little while. But, you know, I'm saying we're straddling life right here in the third dimension, the physical time space. Uh, it's a beautiful place to find ourselves in. Uh, 1D now here is your selfhood, the cellular level, uh, the unconscious, and your 2D is your biological matter, your lower brain, uh, and it's unconscious as well. And then the 3D self physical body, the ego consciousness uh, is very uh, thin layer of consciousness we have, it's beautiful, but uh, short-sighted. 4D self um, is your astral body, higher human consciousness, uh, still unconscious, and fourth dimensional um, energy is proponent of how the holograms and pendants and certain Tesla stuff works, is fourth dimensional. Uh, then 5D is the omnipresent universal energy, uh, that's light body, activated if you will. Uh, unity and consciousness. So this is your super consciousness in the fifth dimension. And so again, we're spanning the gap. We have basic needs, higher ascension. You know, we're kind of all that in the middle in the bag of chips too. All right, and uh, all that in the middle is this infinity sign right there. 
Okay, it's the reincarnation of the infinite souls into a finite human existence. We live in a dualistic world, but we strive for singularity. And our dualistic world has yin, yang, hot, cold, sun, moon, uh, redskins, cowboys. Here you have an uh, old man going into the Grim Reaper, coming out through the angel of light with a new soul into a man getting, uh, crossing the river of sticks, um, which is a reincarnation painting, if you will. And this is the dualistic world we find ourselves in, positive and negative, electromagnetism, uh, in the infinite world uh, that we're a finite body, our souls are infinite to join the higher spark. So we're kind of caught in the crossroads here. Next slide, please. And uh, the crossroads is heaven and hell right here on earth, believe it or not. Yes, your choice, free will. Like frequencies attract similar frequencies. So you resonate, like attracts like. So guilty by association, birds of a feather flock together, you've heard these terms. Uh, so if you raise your vibe, you'll attract people with a raised vibe. If you're going around hating, you're going to attract hating back into you. It's that simple. So stick on the high road and it'll work back for you in your future favor self. All right. And uh, speaking of future favor self, these people have helped us along the way. You've got to have a help every now, now and then. Certainly humans have bumbled across a lot uh, in our time. We've had help. And uh, we've had help with aliens. We've had help with angels. We've had help with ascended masters. Believe it. The evidence is overwhelming if you do the research. Uh, not to say that Jesus was not an alien or these people did not live. They're real people, but it's just a little parable here, so don't be offended, please. Uh, ascended Masters, anyone can become a Jesus or a Buddha. Not anyone. It takes a lot of uh, preparation and, and work to go uh, away into a cave and learn from a master of himself to uh, disappear in mind style, if you will. Uh, that is possible. There's, 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 I've seen a guy on a, a YouTube video with Qigong, he lit, uh, he lit fire on paper. He, he lit paper on fire, excuse me, with his hand. It was all crumpled up. And just with his chi that he generated, he lit paper up on fire. So you can do a lot and put your mind to these things. But we have had help. And uh, if you just kind of daydream, you know, there's, there's uh, fourth dimensional energies that can permeate fifth dimensional, fourth dimensional, into your third dimension. So things permeate down in. And, um, you know, I kind of focus on working yourself up as a pyramid and get your foundation, your pH, and your voltage, and your solid oxygen, which we'll go into in a bit. But there are other levels to it that are maybe beyond the average uh, uh, visualization or conceptualization, but it's very apparent. Uh, there's higher forces at play. And call it what you want, but there's uh, bigger wheels to the, to the cog here and the whole machine. And it's, it's a beautiful thing when, when you're in the flow and it's working for you. So if you're, if, you're, if you're going upstream like a salmon, re-evaluate. So you want to be in the flow. Uh, next slide, please. And this guy was certainly in the flow. He certainly daydreamed and had help from the ethers when he coined this uh, awesome revolutionary equation, E equals MC squared, which changed pretty much our, our reality viewpoint for the world view. Uh, previously, we are looking at old Newtonian versus new Einsteinian world view model. Uh, physics and quantum physics here I'm talking about, and Einstein, so if I'm 100 pounds times the speed of light, which is meters a second, is like a big number, so I have all that much energy. So if you, don't, if you square the speed of light, say it's a, it's a million, whatever, meters per second, you square that, it's 100 million meters per second, and now times my weight, I have a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy to make a bomb go off, okay? It's an atom, and the atom's 99.99% space. So it's only held by electrical bonds. And there's three meanings to this here. Um, this is what the West took it as. This is Einstein's equation. They warped it. The military used it to, to blow up things. All right? But there's the point proved that you can get a lot, a lot of power out of thin air. You know? And that's the beauty of where we're at. And this is kind of my specialty here, modern health coaches, is the next level kind of radiant energy things that are all around us and we're swimming in the sea of them. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but you can harness it and use it for power. And this here is uh, E equals energy, M is mind, and C is light. And this one, E equals enlightenment, M is mind of the overview, and C is light of the universal spirits. So this is a profound equation, and some great thinkers here kind of set the framework, kind of just going to generalize here on some, some prominent people in history that have changed the viewpoint of what's possible even though conventional medicine and 
governments really have blinders on and, and probably kick some dirt over some positive stuff that has happened in the future. Uh, just like this guy got some dirt kicked on in here. Nikola Tesla, fellow Serbian, uh, godfather of electromagnetism in the 20th century here, 20, 20th century. Uh, Nonlinear scalar field radiant energy, all right? Um, so he basically wanted to power the world for free, and he built a tower in Long Island, the Warden Cliff, to do that, and he was almost done, but J.P. Morgan found out and pulled the plug because he runs the meter, and the meter's got to turn so he can get money, he's a big fat banker. So that didn't work out. So Tesla had the plug pulled on, on that program here. Uh, and he, he had a plan to use the Earth as a ground and give free electricity to the whole world. And at the World's Fair, he lit up the first World's Fair in 1900, I think, in St. Louis. But uh, Tesla uh, drove a car around with an antenna and no gas. And uh, he has uh, remarkable inventions with the point being that you can pull energy out of the air there's another inventor, I don't have a slide for, um, that ran 50,000 kilowatts of power for like uh, several hundred hours straight. H.T. Uh, Moray in Salt Lake City, Utah, so the power companies were shooting at it. So it's been done, you can pull power out of the air, and it's, uh, it's remarkable that we're still in the state we are, because uh, this little debate between Hertz, you know, sine wave, Hertz, this. Up here's your sine wave. And Tesla had a scalar wave. This is linear. This is exponential. This isn't a wire, you gotta pay for it. This is free everywhere around us. This guy won out because he's backed by old world money. New world order. So they buried this guy didn't win a Nobel Prize. He had some of the best stuff that was going. This guy was what we call our 60 hertz coming out of the wall. 50 in Europe. Okay, so, and he even admitted that he was wrong, but these guys rigged the debt. So instead of getting free electricity, it's coming out of the wall at a, a Hertz in a sine wave. And it sure is, it, isn't it? It's cooking like popcorn out here. We got a lot of EMF, and it's not good. Electromagnetic frequency radiation, EMF, you'll hear it termed as. EMF radiation, Wi Fi. Not Wi-Fi and megahertz. All right, it's real deal, no good. Uh, and you can ground out. You can, uh, re I say, remediate. Um, you can mitigate the exposure to EMF by grounding, putting your feet on a grounding pad that's hooked into the ground, or a third prong on a plug. That round one's the ground. You can just make a little home shift Radio Shack grounder uh, with um, that technology. But this. All right, here's what we see, right? That little slitter, okay? That's what, you know, our five senses, that's what our eyes can see. And here's the spectrum. You're looking at, you know, hertz, kilohertz, gigahertz, terahertz, you know, something, gajuger, I can't even read that. Something, a lot of hertz, okay? And this is ionizing. It's gonna cause mutations in cancer in the red here. Green's not ionizing. So when you get the suntan, a little bit, a little bit ionizing on the UV part. But uh, your cell phones right here, cooking and heating, Wi-Fi, uh, mobile phones right here, telephones, radio, navigation. So uh, let's say you operate between 1 and 40 hertz like this. This is a 1 to 40 hertz sine wave. Okay, this stuff is like when this and this meet up, this wins. It's higher frequency. So this, I... So uh, it's like you're trying to read a book, you're only operating at a low frequency, and then this comes along, it's like you get an air horn, you can't read the book anymore. Your cells lose focus, they leak, they don't know what to let in and out of their walls for several hours after being exposed to the EMF from all these sources, and uh, it's not good. So next slide. And then what we're talking about here in our modern day, super convenient world that we find ourselves in, uh, we're finding lines of force all around us, and even in Sedona, obviously, lines of force and the whole business built around it around here, spiritual Disneyland. <laughs> uh, you have magnetic lines are yin, and electrical lines are yang. Guys shoot out, girls pull in. All right, so this is your yin-yang, electromagnetism. You can't have one without the other. So when you have an electric line, you've also got a current going around it, which is magnetic which is how your traffic lights work when you 
drive and stop and some of the sensor, I used to put those in and it's had a little uh, eddy current, they called it. So with your car frame, would get over that and shift the sensor and make the light go. So electromagnetism, and, and we're electrical beings, is why I'm telling you this, because we eat food to convert to voltage. You slow burn food to turn to voltage, and that's how we operate. And you'll see these lines of force run a bar manual sol uh, solenoid for a car in the earth. By the way, there we go. Lines of force all over the world. Ley lines, energetic lines of force, L-E-Y. Every pyramid, every sacred structure is built at the crossing of the ley lines because they wanted to magnify the powers of the earth in that structure, that megalithic, monolithic structure, for their ceremonies, probably to get back to the stars. And they use the ley, ley lines of force as amplitude, like a big... Uh, base tube or uh, uh, amplifier, I should say. And here we are out here, a whole host of, I'm not sure how accurate this, this map is, but all these lines of force are, are electromagnetism. The, ele the lines here, airports, electrical yang, uh, bell and cathedral are yin vortexes. Boynton is positive and negative. I joke, it helps balance out your yin yang. That's uh, yin, that's electrical magnetism at, at Boynton. So the, the vortex areas here have yin or yang qualities. And the, the electric feels like you're on top of the world, fired up, and the uh, female could be nurturing, contemplative, a little more introspective. Okay, right, next slide. And uh, check out the Bermuda Triangle, right? No fly zone, pretty much weird stuff happens, radars go, magnetics fly off, planes disappear, and then the no see the Devil's Triangle in Japan, same latitude, same latitude, same latitude, same latitude, same latitude. These are all crazy weird places on the earth that stuff happens that uh, X-Files loves to talk about. So, um, and they're all the same latitude, and if you have an earth that's a round ball, okay, uh, you're having like a, a dodecahedron or little points of sacred geometry that touch the earth, that's where these are at. And it's causing magnetic anomalies and crazy disturbances. And uh, our earth's alive, it's an electromagnetic ball, and we're on it, and we're tied into it. It has seven chakras and Mount Shasta being the uh, root, and the uh, womb is in Latin America, uh, third eye, there on top of the Glastonbury, and uh, all around the world here. So the Earth's alive, we're alive, it has a frequency, we've got frequencies, it's all energy, the atoms, 99.99% of space. Next slide. And then we get into all this radiant kind of smoggy, like foggy uh, energy, and it goes, formates and precipitates into matter. And these matters um, are actually in, in the lines, I should say, excuse me. Uh, and these lines of force um, are like in DNA, and it's a golden ratio uh, that is a spiral that you'll see repeating in nature throughout, even the DNA in a galaxy, so the smallest and the biggest you're seeing the same ratio, which is like that snail shell you'll see here. Uh, even your hand, your finger to your arm, to your, your finger to your hand to your arm is all the, well, the gold ratio. Uh, so you cannot escape the math. And it's, um, and now say now it can, the mathematics of the lines now would get more formation and um, materialize into the elements, which is your basic foundation here is the tetrahedron, so the most simple of the fire, and you get to the cube for earth, and then your octahedron for air, and isotahedron for water, and dodecahedron for ether down here. So this is the, the thinnest of all. And the most sided, this is a ten-sided, so this is eight, so twelve, sorry, yes. <laughs> um, so you have your elements and your platonic solids, again for Plato. Uh, your platonic solids, very important um, elements of life, and you'll see that in traditional Chinese medicine, how the elements uh, play a part in your life and the different organ systems, but the energy uh, kind of condenses here on Earth into those formations. And speaking of formations, we have, again, uh, matter is 99.9% space, matter is mostly frozen energy and pockets of light. Uh, and what holds atoms together is energy, and energy is everything, and everything is energy, and anything is possible. These elements are fundamental building blocks of the universe, and uh, we have um, a whole bunch of them, 100 or so, and they're good for you and bad for you. I'd recommend getting a hair test 
to see which ones you have too much and not enough of. And uh, that's a service I offer and a lot of people do as well. But a hair tissue mineral analysis is the best way to get a profile of your elements to make sure you don't have arsenic or uranium too high or not enough, uh, you know, pick a, a mineral. Every disease is traced back to a mineral shortage, okay? Uh, every disease traced back to a mineral shortage. So <clears throat> you can't get it from the soil because they're putting petrochemicals in it. And you're not going to get it from licking a rock because plants can only do that, break down from a rock. And sea salt, hope you're not going to cook it. Um, so you got to get other forms. And I find Ormus to be the premier and then fulvic and humic minerals. And uh, that is going to make you fire preeminently. Um, it's, it's, I call it Gatorade for your brain. It makes everything happen. It's the synaptical, you're an electrical being. You have 75 trillion cells, all operate between 0.7 and 0.9 volts. Cancerous cells, 0.1 and 0.2 volts. You got to keep your pH up to hold your voltage. And these minerals is what's key. Uh, and then, so all these. Uh, minerals and different formations and elements, uh, if you play them with sound, you'll get sacred geometry and cymatics. And uh, again, you cannot escape the math. The frequencies makes the formation. So energy is the subline and the precipitation of the formation. Kind of how energy in the atom is the subline and the matter is the precipitation of that. So you're seeing matter personified almost or energy frequency personified here in the cymatics and you can we'll go on a YouTube video and type in cymatics and get the big steel plate with the sand and they go and the sand snaps in the sacred geometrical shapes like you see here just from playing sound on a big steel plate. So sound and that's how they say they built the pyramids with two little ice cream cones and sound, ultrasound to anti-gravity, that's a whole other topic, but uh, it makes these cool shapes. Cool shapes, huh? All right. Alien crop circle, sacred geometrical clues to what? Free energy, better ways to live, uh, states of matter, sacred geometry. This is, a, if you pop that out, it's a 2D, it's a 2D representation of a 3D toroidal field, uh, which is what the universe makes, and it's a beautiful sacred geometrical shape, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, and then these are thousands of crop circles, mainly in England, uh, and no, no drunkard Scotsman could ever do that. Um, and it's the real deal, and they're trying to tell us something, that there's better ways out there than what's being told uh, through the mainstream, I call it the lamestream. Um, so uh, make sure you throw your TV out and throw away your microwave, please. So, so you can receive the signal. It's the signal you're getting jammed, not y'all, but whoever's out there. This is what you want to be looking at here, the toroidal field, the keystone energy blueprint here. Uh, structure to function, basically. The universe makes toroidal fields. Uh, I have one on my body that goes like this, out and around, and down and up and out and around. It's like a two donuts rolling out from each other all around. Um, and you have it on the atomic level, the human level, the planetary. Sun has the same flow going on and so do Solar, uh, not solar systems, but uh, galaxies here. They've seen stars that have gotten shot out and followed this trajectory around slowly. Not the whole one, but parts of it. Uh, so this is what uh, the universe has going on for us. It's a toroidal field, and it's a, another uh, monumental discovery of, of the beauty of nature and the simplicity. Uh, humans make it complicated. Nature is perfectly simple. Next slide, please. And behind nature is quantum physics and, and quantum mechanics. Just a real quickie for you guys. I don't want to get uh, too schooly on this one, but top left here, quantum ones. These are these are principles that, uh, that permeate throughout life. And if you and if you know these, you can apply them to the rest of your life and get deeper into it and further ahead. Quantum uncertainty is the you know, can't know where and when. It's all probabilities. There's nothing finite. You can't know where and when. You can only know one or the other. So it's all probabilities, which means that your future is a probability depending on what you do, where, and when. Okay? Wave of a particle, dualistic, uh, we're photonic, we're frozen light, we're part matter, part light. We're both. We're dualistic. So we're matter and light. It's called a photon. It has both properties. And that's measured by the split screen experiment where they had a flashlight and put 
splits on it, and they saw waves and particles. So it's both, and that's what we are both. Quantum tunneling, you can go right through things from far away, like a teleportation. Uh, quantum entanglement is how, the, again, how the holograms uh, work, and that would be uh, these spins were once connected before they separated by the whole uh, matrix here, and with this spin to the right, that one will spin to the right. This one spins to the left, this one spins to the left. They're entangled quantumly. Okay, from the distance doesn't matter. They're quantumly entangled. We're not in that XYZ time space here. Um, and just real quick, the superposition, anyone get to that? Superposition is just in phase. You can have like waves in the ocean and bigger waves come in. You want to be in phase with your waves. You want to be out of phase. Electricity in phase is more efficient. Electricity out of phase is less efficient and more uh, ohms and resistance. So we are electrical beings. We want to be more in phase keep our waves flow and be able to handle multiple things on different frequencies and kind of make a little symphony harmony conducting, you know. Uh, and quantum theory going into everything here in life, not like everything but a lot. You have quantum computing and lasers and communications, cryptography, um, and then we also have uh, quantum theory permeating uh, the bad, the good, and the ugly here. <laughs> Bombs, power, and medical uh, uses. We don't need we don't need your radiation and chemo. Uh, we don't need your bombs and we don't need your power because there's other better ways. So radiation in this part for me has failed. There is cold fusion, which is works. So you can check that out for sure. There's many other ways in what we're doing that has circuits. It's a game of whack-a-mole with suppression technology. It's pretty sad. Um, so the quantum physics and all the underlying tones work because our, mat our universe is mostly not matter. We're this little sliver, 0.4% stars, we're the, we're the et cetera, 0.4%. <laughs> this is the multiverse, if you want to call it that, okay, and intergalactic gases. And, and I call this orgone, zero-point energy, Christ conscious, energetic matrix. It's been called several things, uh, ether, uh, but you can use that. Physicists call that dark energy and like, like, like junk DNA, but they don't know what it is, so they give it a term that, that is like 13, it's bad luck, you know, they, they taboo it, but you really need to learn into it because they can't figure it out, so it must be good. Uh, dark energy and dark matter is, again, the orgone and zero point energy, Christ consciousness, and energetic matrix, zero point energy, whatever you want to call it, you can tap into it, Tesla style, uh, and get power up. That's another view of it on our little surface on top. Here's Hubble, deep space shot, beautiful. Um, and, you know, even if you go the speed of light from here to here, it's going to take you a heck of a long time. So the deal is uh, that the etheric negative space time versus the positive physical space time is a lot faster than the speed of light. These quantum scalar waves are a lot faster than the speed of light. That's why these things work instantly. That's why you can communicate uh, quantum entanglement. You can affect things on the other side. That's why you can transfer Reiki. That's why these phenomena are explained by negative space time. Negative, here's positive space time. Negative. This is the quantum scalar field down here. This is what you're normally used to feeling, this stuff. All right, here's my man, Wilhelm Reich, Freud's assistant. You know Sigmund Freud, right? little neurotic, but good guy. Uh, Sigmund Freud was, I'm not Sigmund Freud, Wilhelm Reich was into um, humans, female and male energy. Again, positive and negative, yin yang. And he called that orgone energy. And orgone energy he viewed at waterfalls and beautiful places where there's high energy and it's a blue glow and you can see it around the earth. And um, he was able, able to capture that energy with an orgone accumulator. And it, what, uh, it was a box you sit in, and, and Einstein proved it raised the temperature of 0.4 degrees Celsius. Einstein couldn't tell right that because his letters were being intercepted by Westinghouse, so uh, that never got out. But you can add energy from where it was not there before. If it's raising heat, it's certainly adding energy. Um, and so that this organ accumulator, which was termed a sex box in the 60s by New York Post, and got this guy put in jail for sending these across state lines, this man died in prison with all his books burnt in New York City incinerator like a witch Salem witch trial. This guy was a healer that all he wanted to do was help people and 
he got into, I think this is what the, the and so he, when he died in prison, all his books burned, and he had, uh, he was actually murdered in prison two weeks before he was let out. Uh, he said he had an anti-gravity plant stolen before then too. This thing down here on the bottom right-hand corner, I call it the howitzer, is a uh, chemtrail buster or a rain maker. Uh, and basically you aim these long copper tubes with double-ended crystals at each end of the sky and you can make clouds go away, break up chemtrails as well, and you can make it rain if you hook these hoses into the groundwater. So if you don't, if you want to make it part, you want to keep chemtrails away from your house, put this baby up in the sky, aim it, let it sit there for a while, and you'll watch clouds roll in and kind of part away from it. And if you hook the bottom down into the groundwater, you'll be able to make it rain. Uh, Reich had the biggest flood in Tucson after there was the biggest drought in Tucson when he went down there for several weeks and off the Gulf of California, aimed this thing at there, and uh, the biggest flood sure is hit in 1954. You can read that because he also had some UFO contact and he disabled one. The Air Force flew by and gave him a thumbs up. Good stuff on that guy, lots of research. But this applies to us and how it, it matters to what we can do with this energy. It's floating all around us. I want you guys to be able to take something home with you on this and it's all around us. And these guys, uh, spoon bending, just another um, feat that you can do with your mind uh, beyond moving anything. This stuff is real. Uh, there's spoon bending seminars and classes around the world just to show. Um, and the Maharishi Project is uh, basically meditators around the world, part in several like big 20 some cities. They've done projects where they've dropped crime rates by meditating on peace. And they've done it in DC, and here's the Middle Eastern stats. Uh, it parallels the amount of meditators to the less crime or uh, turmoil in that region of the world. It's happening hand over hand. So there is hope, there is, uh, you know, goodwill out there. There's people that, that, you know, your hopes and your prayers don't go unanswered. There's not some guy in the sky hearing everything, but there is some type of higher intelligence that steers it all right at the end. So uh, you don't know when, where, how, why, but trust the, trust the good faith of uh, moving on in ascending. And uh, let me read up top here, mind over matter, anything is possible, your thoughts, words, actions, and emotions all add up over life to your resident vibration and current situation. Uh, make luck, upgrade your beliefs, perceptions, and manifest destiny. Others around you can be affected by this, as we see here. So if you raise your vibe, don't go lunging off balance to look for somebody to, to get into their vibe. Raise your own vibe and attract the things into you. It's reverse psychology. Just raise your vibe and let it come to you. So work on these things that we're going to go over here in the next few slides on how to raise your vibe. You know, what does this all mean? What's all this energy floating around? So what? What's, I mean, when I turn my switch on and I go to bed and I use power, you know, does it, does it matter to me? Yes, it does. Because you can uh, attain this energy and you have levels of it that permeate down right into our skin here from the ethers. You know, we're all connected, okay? So there's no I, me, you, he, she. There's this uh, illusion that we're all separated, we're all connected here, and uh, it permeates through different levels, different levels uh, of the divine body out here on the outside, the highest of all, uh, and, and towards your spiritual body, which is a, you know, is a, a field, and your casual body, uh, down with the mental, as we go in, sorry, an emotional astral, etheric, and then your physical auric with the gray here is the most dense of all. And you can feel, people feel and sense eyes across the room. I mean, we have a, a field, and your heart has a field of several tens of feet, I think, beyond, an electromagnetic field, and it's a riddle shape, I'm sure. Um, so you're, we, are, we are just fields. You have attractor fields. You're attracted to things, and you have things that deflect, and they're all uh, relative to uh, your soul in this body at this time space. I mean, we're all here doing different things, but this is the field that we find ourselves in, and um, it's like a quantum scalar field. This is information travels very quick in here. So you can sort through stuff. And these are your chakras. We'll go over in a minute, obviously. And uh, so we get to the energy part. And now we get more in how concrete you can change into the, your into your new ascension. Uh, what's all the energy that's, that's, that's profound, but on the street level, how do I go about my day to get my energy back up to be able to absorb some of this beauty around me? And I find the premier uh, foundation for health is your pH. And I don't talk, I'm not talking about Kangen water, I'm talking about cellular uh, pH in your tissues and your fluids and your balance. It's 
not all about cranking the 10 to eat cheeseburgers. It's about getting a balance and uh, not being um, acidic and anaerobic. You need to be alkaline and oxygenated. And if you are, uh, no seed can land on uh, the seed being a germ. So it's not the seed, it's the soil. Um, and the interior bioterrain is the soil and the seed is the germs. So it's not the seed, it's the soil. So if your interior bioterrain is alkaline and oxygenated, I don't care with H1N1, swine flu, or avian flu, birds, whatever the new flu they have out this year, if it lands in there, it ain't gonna germinate. It's like a seed trying to land on a concrete pad, it ain't gonna germinate. So alkaline oxygenated is easier said than done. You can get pH test strips to monitor that, especially the P in the morning, first two P between 7.6 and 8, I mean 6.8 and 7.2. Uh, you wanna be in there. Probably if you're in the fives, you got some work to do. Uh, so this is the foundation of health. And, and, and if you are not alkaline, oxygenated, you're asking for trouble. And, and here's your trouble down here, and here's alkaline, oxygenated right here. Where do you want to swim? Okay, I used to be a lifeguard. Every day I had baking soda to keep the pH above seven. Once it got below seven, you didn't want to go swimming. Okay, so you're two-thirds water, ain't nothing different. Same thing in you, same principles apply, as above, so below, it's on a chemical level. Uh, but it's all about your pH, and you don't be keep adding baking soda like that. To, it'll make your minerals imbalance, but there are ways to keep your pH up, baking soda being one of them. Uh, cellular voltage and pH are directly related. They are pretty much the same thing. Think of pH as horsepower. Flip the HP around. Horsepower. The more your pH, the more you can get done. The better you feel, the more you get done. That's why I'm in this business. The better you feel, the more you get done. Okay? If you're 7.88, you're getting, not only getting your work done, you're regenerating more, 50 million cells every second. That's the magic number. If you're above 50 million cells, you're regenerating. You're below 50 million cells, making new ones every second. You're regenerating and, I'm sorry, degenerating. You're below 50. So, to be above, you gotta be alkaline. If not, you're in fight or flight and, and disrepair mode. Here's seven, right here. Polarity shift. Just above, slightly alkaline is all you need to be. You don't want to be 8, 9, 10, just to be slightly alkaline. Uh, and as we get older, and as we get sicker, we get worse. And we don't want to get there. You can change this, it takes time, but if you're diligent, it's on. The problem is 20 to 1. For every part of one, for every part of the city, you got 20 parts of alkalinity. So if I have one cheeseburger, I need 20 salads, generally. <laughs> right? So this is the earthquake scale. This is 10 times stronger than this. This is 100 times strong. 4 is 100 times stronger than 6. So this is very different. And most of your water, your reverse osmosis, and distilled water down here, bottled water. But the problem is your blood, 7.365. With slight range. We operate in slight ranges. pH, temperature, you know, uh, temperature. All very slight ranges. We're very narrow bands. We like our stuff just the way we like it. Goldilocks, you know? <laughs> so a lot goes into that energy to keep those bands where we need them. And when you eat acidic food, you're stealing minerals from your stomach. So from your stomach, you get heartburn. Osteoporosis from your bones. I mean, calcium from your bones, you get osteoporosis. So from your stomach, you get heartburn. These are the minerals that we neutralize when we eat this food. When we eat the acidic food, we rob minerals. Magnesium is the most common mineral shortage in the world. Half the people, two-thirds of them are, are short on it. Sulfur. These are all alkaline. They have extra electrons. These are electron donors. Potential of hydrogen ion, which is an electron. Donors, robbers. Tired down here, energy up here. Have four, 80% of what you eat, seven and above, 20% down here. You got five fingers. I have a four finger sandwich right here. Here's one finger, two, three, four. Okay, and kick one finger for all these. That way you'll be alkaline. 20 to one, you gotta flip it the other way. Rainbow rotation, Roy G. Biv. Somewhere under the rainbow you'll find nutrition. And you ain't gonna find the same piece of toast and jam every day. You gotta have a rainbow rotation diet because all the colors are all different nutrients. And if you're eating all the colors, you're gonna get all the nutrients. And here's a little breakdown. White's the immune support, green's detox, yellow's beauty, <clears throat> orange cancer prevention, red heart health, 
and purple's longevity, uh, right? That's a nice little rotation there. So get what's on special, learn to love it, be creative, get out there and, and, and get to know your farmers and your farmer markets. You never know who you might meet. <laughs> Exactly. Death begins in the colon. Um, we have like how many hundreds of thousands of tons of food by the time we die, all through 29 feet of squiggly pipes from your mouth to your butt. 29 feet, it's like a first down in football, like zigzag with hairpin turns, right? And you're stuffing meat and potatoes and all that. So uh, just some quick tips. Don't have water when you're going to eat food. Stay, keep it away, especially after. Have, do a shot of apple cider vinegar before the meal. That's really good with your enzymes. Have some enzyme tablets before. Uh, watch your food combining. You can get a, you can Google up a food combined chart. It's big circles, you know, meat, potatoes, and uh, melon, don't with anything. Um, and your timing. You know, try to be regular, and and uh, we'll get into some timing here in a bit. But you also want to chew it very well, and and be in a good space and sit down. When you move, when you're walking and staying and eating, you don't digest your food as well. Make sure you sit down in a good space of mind. Take a time out. Just, just tune in. Say a little piece with your food, bring the vibe up. It all helps. It all matters. And um, we're outnumbered by bacterial cells. Sorry to say. Uh, I didn't think so either, but we are. And uh, those are our friends, and they can multiply quick. Uh, and we need to keep the right environment in our intestines so they are invited back, so we don't have the wrong people crashing the party. When you get candida, and these other guys come to the party here in the gut, you get problems, and that happens when you're acidic, and, and, and it's just a downward spiral. Uh, your health really begins here. If food's not being broken down, garbage isn't being taken out, bugs are showing up, and problems are happening. Rotting, and you call it symptom A to Z, it's just the basis. If you're not breaking your food down, you're not getting it out. You're not getting your nutrients, and you're getting garbage in your pipes. So something's going to give. So digestion is really, really key, and uh, stay away from box bags and cans, if you can. I know it's tough, <laughs> but if it comes from a box bag and a can, and you can't pronounce it, definitely stay away if you can't pronounce it. Holistic shock and awe, that's my term for it here, what I put together pretty much in the slideshow, uh, and then some. And uh, so if you're if you get your food down, you have cellular hygiene. You got cellular, and we're eating the food and the pH, and you're all good. You got your oxygen, your voltage, you're all humming. You have cellular hygiene. Everything's in and out. Your cells are flowing. They got what they need. Uh, you're going to have bioenergetic field, and it's going to be popping out like this guy's here. You're going to be on the right. Okay, you're going to be. It's going to glow, and, and I call it cellular hygiene. When you glow from the inside out, and that really does begin you know, all the way from the inside out. Cellular hygiene. You glow from the inside. Out. That's radiant health. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about getting LEDs on your face and then get your teeth white and go to the tanning bed. That's crap. That's like LA in the 80s, you know. I'm, I'm way beyond that stuff. I'm talking about radiant health and glowing and doing these things to incorporate the physical, the chemical, the emotional, the electrical, the structural, all the different aspects of our multi-dimensional body here is a lot going on. And, uh, and where do you guys fall on the, where do you resonate, you know? Uh, in this multi-dimensional body, we have emotions, all right? And our, our lowest emotion, shame. Go over and ask the uh, evil spirit what his name is. He ain't going to tell you. It's shame. He's shameful of what he's done. He ain't going to tell you. So you got guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride. 80% of America resonates right here. My dad will beat up your dad. Courage. Once you get above 200, you accept responsibility for your own actions. This is a big point right here. Empowerment. Hello. So we're talking about, right? Courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, enlightenment. 700,000. Pure consciousness. Fifth dimensional energy here. Omniscient, omnipresent, how we want to term it. Illumination, bliss. So um, we want to work ourselves up. You can muscle test yourself to see where you resonate at. Am I shameful? No. Yes? No. You can ask yourself anything like that. Or even a food. Do I want this water? Yes? No. If I lean back, if I stand right there, ground, do I want this right now? Yes. Do you mind? So, um, this is the map of consciousness. It's a beautiful thing. Um, once, just reading that book, you can raise it 45 points. 
uh, and a lot of people are kind of down here. We're working our way. People are hitting the snooze bar. Next week. <clears throat> and again, the physical, chemical, structural, mental. Uh, and there's a lot out there. I understand that. And it's very confusing. It's overwhelming. There's a lot of mis and disinformation put out there on purpose. So once you hear a study that this is good for you next week, the study said this is bad for you. So <clears throat> follow the money. Know who's putting out what. And um, get, get to know some of your weak links and what you need and do what works for you. There's a lot out there. But on the mental side of things, you know, you're dealing with homeopathy, uh, high herbal uh, tinctures and whatnot, and stress and psyche. You can get to work and talk things out. And your Bach flower remedies, very famous remedies for flower, electromagnetic therapies here for mental and esoteric um, text and talking. And your structural is different ways to go about it here. You know, chiropractor, muscle techniques, acupuncture, and reflex. Uh, and on the chemical side here, again, uh, herbs, nutrition, uh, allopathy, only thing needed, homeopathy, of course, uh, orthomolecular toxicity and allergy. So this is, again, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, kinesiology, I found, was the crown jewel of all my knowledge I've done in research. I went back to school for kinesiology. I find that it gave balance, it, it gave uh, um, perceptive uh, reference to everything else that I learned. And I learned a lot, and this kind of helped, uh, one, I could sort through if I wanted or not. It was a, it was a, it was a divining tool to find truth or the root of the problem in the health situation, you get to the root of the problem. You know, you don't mask it with uh, pills and a band-aid, you get to the root of the problem. And you solve your own problems. You can do that, there's the information out there, there's other people putting it together, and there's a lot of tools that are rather cheap that you can do for yourself. And, and certainly your mind, free will, is the cheapest thing out there. It's the most powerful, so you don't need to work cheap. Uh, five elements. You have fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. You got four organs in your fire, your heart, small intestine, triple warmer circulation, sex, and you have emotions in with these as well. I'll get into it in a minute. Uh, earth, and spleen, and stomach, metal is lung and large intestine, water, kidney, and bladder. Liver and gallbladder makes wood, and there's your brain and your back. Okay, these fire all the time because your central energy reservoir. It goes from your pubic bone top to your top lip, right here. That's your central energy reservoir. You got 12 other circuits called organs that fire off of that. Okay? And that's your 14 in traditional Chinese medicine or kinesiology. Kinesiology is the best of East and West. So I take the best and leave the rest. That's kind of where I'm coming from. Why not? It's out there. High tide chart. This is what I call it. There's 24 hours in a day. You've got 12 organs. Your brain and your back are always on. Okay? And the other 12 organs. There's two hours of peak, two hours of off peak. Your heart's peak at 11 to 1. Your heart's off peak is at midnight, 11 to 1 at night. Okay? Five to seven is large intestine. Get up and take care of business, right? Seven to nine, have some breakfast for your stomach. One to three, have some lunch for your small intestine. Seven to nine, try to make a baby. Circulation sex. All right. So these are you can live in the flow. And if you do a time balance, where you uh, rub, you do the corrections. Say I have kidney between five and seven, and I run the so as correction. I do the corrections for the kidney at that time. It'll give me an extra boost. So once you know uh, your, if you're always tired at a certain time of day, something's up with the organ. These are clues that you can use to hone in on what's going wrong and, and correct it. So it's an assessment tool yeah, and a correction tool. Rub, hold, rub the meridian, do the flow. You know, we got the yin side on the inside, yin, and then the yang on the out. So we a big toroidal yin, yang, out. So it's the yin on the, in, the yin side, yang, yin, yang, you know, yin. It's all in us, electrically. Electrically, 14 circuits. As I was saying, this is one line cut in 14 segments called your meridians. Okay? Large intestine, finger to your nose. Remember, you smell your large intestine, if I remember. I guess, right? That's your large intestine. Okay? Kidney, K1, around the ankle up here, K27. So there's 14 of these little movements that I do where you tap at the beginning, two fingers, tap at the end. 
your mind. Here's your brain. You want to go like, get, get up in the morning, tap your pubic bone three times, the bottom left. Don't go back down. Go around. One, two, three. Inhale. One, two, three. Turn your brain on. Turn your brain off. So up, on, down. Turn back on. Okay. So you can you can manipulate like an EQ on a stereo system and get your sound crystal clear. That's what kinesiology is all about. And a really important way to do that is through your lymphatics because you can only you, you can run the you can run the meridians with your arm. You get all three on your arm like this is a good one, right? the meridian brush and do like your legs too but you also have to rub the lymph and you have two to three times as much lymphatic fluid as you do blood but no heart to pump it so well, that's cruel you got this heart going all its life and you got all this lymph it's all your dishwater fluid all your all your gravy i call it all right you got to move it so you get in between your ribs see all these spots these are lymph spots here's your brain in the morning you want to wake up your brain you're right in your armpit you want to get all these in here. Your lung is on your sternum. Small intestine under here. Can't go to the bathroom. Large intestine on the outside. Small intestine on the inside. Four sets. Uh, on the pubic bone is some. Then all on your back. Your whole spine. Up and down. So here's your, here's your brain. Here's a little fact for your brain. So you're foggy. Get right in here and clear that up. Get in here and clear that up for your brain. Okay? And each of these relate to a different organ. And you say, oh, why is my right side hurt between my fifth and sixth rib? That's my liver lymphatic. Oh, it's clogged. Oh, I went out last weekend. Oh, that's right. That's why. It all makes sense. <laughs> this is the map in the manual of how to operate your body. Uh, if it hurts here, it means this. And when you say where it is, it isn't. So because it hurts here, it doesn't mean that you're fine. It means your large intestine needs releasing for the lymph, you know. So it's, uh, this is the map and the manual of how to optimize your body. I highly recommend getting into kinesiology. <clears throat> it's basically, you have 14 meridians and seven chakras, and you gotta balance them. And it gets out of balance quick. Balance is a fine line, and that is the key to everything, really. It's knowing that balance, it's like a symphony conductor. It's gotta sound just right, so you can go as far as you can in life. <clears throat> so you wanna find your weak link, and you wanna work on it, and you can, you can find that out, again, through muscle testing or find a trained practitioner. Uh, but if you're looking at these chakras, look a little different here, huh? Those are party hats or whatever. This is vortexes. That goes in and out the back. All right? And you can, if you were to go, I can stimulate my chakras. I get tuning forks and you can do it with your hands. But you can bring clockwise is putting good energy in, real slow, like like chi style, real slow. Put the good energy in clockwise, and you can take out the bad energy doing counterclockwise over your chakras. So if you have someone to lay down, you can kind of work in out, work uh, the good and bad in and out, or work the bad out, excuse me, the good in, <laughs> uh, because there's energy flow set up like that already. You got one in your crown and one in the ground. So you're all appropriated, right? Thanks, please. And what does all that do? I mean, basically, uh, the the chakras is a seven. It's your endocrine system, which is your seven glands. Your seven glands. You know, your glands tell you to do this. Glands tell you to do that. It's like a chemical messenger. It tells you, uh, okay, I want to eat. I want to want to mate. I'm hungry. These are glands. If they get things moving, or I'm, I feel sad, or I feel happy, these are all glands. And that's your endocrine system, and that's all noted right here, uh, what they do. Your pineal gland, your pituitary, your thyroid, your thymus, pancreas, your gonads, and I can't see that one. Um, so these are all work the body, and you can find out what's wrong physically, start energetically. Don't wait till it becomes a physical problem, to let manifest into a physical problem. Deal with it energetically, it's a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot faster. Don't wait till it manifests, because it's gonna, you're not gonna like, the, the people telling you what to do. I've been there. Uh, so you can find out what's wrong with you symptom-wise if you look in these rows and you you know you look in the mirror. If there's something going wrong, uh, you can you can pinpoint it. You can work on it holistically as opposed to getting freaked out by some guy in a lab coat that treats you like an alien autopsy. You don't want that. 
you want someone that cares about you. Actually, you're, you are the cure and you, you are your best practitioner. And this is your primary care health provider right here. And you can do that with your two feet. We were running the energy before with our minds. You can move it. And there's a lot that goes into it. But it's again, it's holistic shock and awe. And it takes, um, it takes, it takes uh, willingness to not want to be like the Joneses. Because you see what's going on, and you say, I, can, I, I know better. And now you can do better because you have the right information and some tools, you know, just basics, really. But it's information that we're not given. We're given half truths. Everything in school is gonna, it tells us half the truth. This is the other half. It's like, how do you put all this together? What's it all mean? What do I do with it? How does it get me ahead? You know, this is what I try to get across to people. Uh, does it matter? You can really, it's day and night. You see some people that are like, you know, backwoods and kind of questionable if the elevator goes up all the way. Then you see someone else's way. I mean, there's, there's a big difference in humanity of what we can become. So let's, let's you know, take a step back and assess and then go the right direction, the you know, best way forward. And uh, next slide, please. And a good way to do that is with Qigong and yoga. I highly recommend. Uh, I, I've taken Qigong water method, helped me with my knee and hip surgery. Kind of just move, it's energy cultivation, and you can just move it around real slow and make little chi balls and throw them across the room if you want, or just to recirculate them to areas that need energy. And it's all about you know pain is just the voltage with too many ohms. It's not it's, it has it has a resistance, so the wire the, the signal's not getting through, and there's a feedback. So you can work on that and let the energy flow. And it's chi come, chi go. You don't want to hold on to it. You want to let it flow. If there's an impingement, there's going to be a problem. Uh, and yoga is great, of course. All the I, I prefer uh, just doing it at home, but a class is good as well. Several postures, uh, an inversion table, and a rebounder is my two favorite things. In addition, which is not on here, uh, an inversion table is two or three G forces, and a rebounder, an inversion table, a rebounder is two or three G forces, and an inversion table. Uh, is decompressing. Every vertebrate needs to own one. Uh, you need to release pressure because all those uh, off the nerves. Because the spine has all the nerves, which is all the, the you know all the wiring for the brain. You need to take the pressure off the nerve. It's a way of a nickel. Five grams can impede a signal like 40 or 60 percent. So just a little subluxation of the back. So you please be and be very cognizant of your posture, your speech, your words, your thoughts. These all matter. These all go into your vibrational. Uh, battery score at the end of the at the end of the hall. You know you want to keep at you want to be cognizant of all what you're thinking about, what you're talking about, and keep your you know where you look is where you think. If I'm walking thinking low thoughts, I'm gonna look down. If I'm thinking highly thoughts, I'll look up. So be careful where you look people in the eye. That's a more of a direct thing. You want to keep your eyes up, you know, feet on the ground, and, and look at the horizon. And kind of what we're saying, the 3D, we're kind of spanning the gaps. You want to be right in there. You know, looking like like when you drive. You always look far ahead, scan your way back. As far as you can, don't look with your head down and you get hit by a tree. Look as far and work your way back. Look as far as you can. Know all this and work your way to it. You know, next slide. And this is what I've done here at the site, and I implore you to, to cruise around here. I put a lot into it. Uh, I really uh, care and I think I know a thing or two I put together. Uh, just a common guy with some problems that had to overcome them and change careers over it and be made a lifestyle. So. Uh, you never know, and that's the beauty of life. And uh, just take what you have and, and keep keep digging forward uh, in positive faith, and, and good things will come your way. And if you have questions, you can contact me. I live in Sedona here in the area. I'm, I'm available. What we feel, I say, Joy and I really have raised the bar in health and have incorporated a lot more in the website in the last five years. Uh, you know, I started with a buy a gold and health force, health health force nutritionals. Uh, as my uh, supplement carriers and then expanded out and got about 250 products on there and services uh, and a real interesting angle on it from an environmental background to a you know holistic health view and everything in between um, a lot to be had and there's also an affiliate program if you guys are interested uh, sign up for free while it lasts uh, still for free and you can make uh, generous commissions on everything here um, that will be happening for everybody. That's uh, a great program. So, uh, Modern Health Coach, utopia or dystopia, it's a no-brainer, right? So, we want, we, we know better, so let's, let's just, everybody in, in your contact, just, just uh, take the high road and uh, it'll pay off for you and get you to the promised land. 
sooner than later. So, uh, and if not, at least feel better for a longer time. That's really the, bo the bottom line is to feel good for a long time. You know, enjoy your life because there's a lot to live. All right, so thanks a lot, y'all. I enjoyed uh, speaking to you. I answered some questions here if you want, and uh, hope that made sense. Thanks. Wow. Is it, How are we doing on time? A little, okay, a little bit.